Can you kill someone with a high heel? Oh! Oh! Hello, Internet! Welcome to Style Theory, where today we're putting the phrase killer heels to the test. We've all heard the phrase killer heels, right? It can mean anything from, whoa, your heels are killer, they look nice, to, oh my gosh, these heels are literally killing my feet. I wanted to test out today whether they could actually kill. Can killer heels literally kill? Someone. Seems like a ridiculous question, right? But there's actually plenty of precedent for it. We've all seen movies and television shows where the heroine's suddenly out of options. So what she do? She reaches down and rips the shoe off her foot and BOOM! She saves the day with a little help from her heel. In fact, it's such a popular idea that there are self-defense classes that focus purely on using your shoes as weapons. Today, these women are about to find out high heels aren't just high fashion. Stilettos, platforms, and pumps can make effective weapons if you know how to use them. And believe it or not, but the word stiletto, those sharp, tall, pointy heels, yep, that's Italian for little knives, which honestly is a pretty darn accurate description. More often than not, inside that little point is a stem of solid steel or alloy. So, is it plausible? Is this all just movie fiction, or is shoe combat an actual viable strategy when you're in a life-threatening emergency? That's why I'm in a room that's literally ripped straight from Dexter, and right next to this guy right here, my dear friend, the human skull that's gonna be bloody and bruised by the time this episode is over. He is gonna be smacked upside the head, left, right, and sideways with every shoe that we can find in our closets. But in order to do that, in order to start our experiment off right, I don't have enough heels. So I called in some of my friends who could help. Without any further ado, let's give a warm welcome, me alone on set. To Stephanie and Amy, who are gonna help me solve this problem yeah, today. Woo! The world's weirdest game show! Stephanie, I'm sure most of you are familiar with. Hi. Amy, meanwhile, you've popped in on a couple things at this point, yeah. so you should be familiar with her if you've watched GT Live or any of our St. Jude stuff food or theory. Food Theory. I was gonna say. She's the original dancer at Chuck E. Cheese. Penny Penny, I think her name is, actually, was the original <laughs> dancer. Chuck E. Cheese, true story, started as a portrait. And then that was it. And and we've devolved into children's animatronics. As every we always, time! Everything goes to there. Every time! Before we get even more off track, it's time to remind you to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss all the crazy experiments we've got coming down the pipeline. Like, how many t-shirts does it take to stop a bullet? I was wondering that question. Then we tested it out and I have the answer. And you can have the answer too, as long as you subscribe to the channel so you're notified when that video gets uploaded. Did I stall enough? Did you take the time to subscribe? Great! That means it's time to get back to our experiment. The plan was to test out a bunch of shoe styles to see how differently the various heels perform. Each one comes with a different weight and surface area, two variables that matter a lot when it comes to the potential force a shoe is able to deliver to the old noggin. Now, if you've been watching the theory channels for a while, you've probably heard me talk a lot about force. Force is the push or pull exerted on an object as it interacts with another object, and you calculate it by multiplying mass times acceleration. F equals MA, or FMA for short. Honestly, as far as physics equations go, this one is pretty darn easy. The heavier the object is, or the higher its mass, then the harder it's gonna be to stop it. It has more force. So one thing we wanted to test out was whether a weightier shoe was better able to deliver skull-crushing damage. The other key difference was the surface area. Obviously, flat shoes are gonna have a larger area of impact than a sharp, pointed heel, which means that any force they're hitting the skull with is being spread out, as opposed to hitting it in a small, focused point. But how much of a difference are we talking about here? Is that really gonna be the maker or breaker of death itself? We were we're about to find out. In total, we plan to test out five different types of shoes, all of which were plucked directly out of Amy's closet. We thank her and pay her for her sacrifice. We wanted to run the gamut of footwear, so our shoe shelf included a pair of sandals, more for the emotional damage of getting hit with a sandal than the physical damage, then some sneakers, a pair of wedges, by far our heaviest shoes of the day, a chunky heel, and finally, the stilettos. Before busting out the ballistic dummy, we wanted to see what level of forces we were actually working with here. According to a study by Sauco and Knight, a skull can fracture under a mere 73 newtons, which is kind of crazy, but a fracture won't necessarily kill you. Another study from Japan estimated that you'd need about 5,400 newtons to do a full-on Game of Thrones skull crush. That right there is a big range of numbers, which is honestly why we're just going to test it for ourselves. For that, we sent Jason out to get a handy-dandy force meter to see exactly how much force we're exerting with each of these shoes. The plan was for each of us to take three swings to get some average force readings from three individuals with different sizes and arm strength. But uh, let's just say there was a bit of a learning curve on this one. Ready? <laughs> Did it even register? I don't know. No. Zero! Go again! 
<laughs> it, keeps, it keeps glancing off. Sure. It really yeah. does. Somebody else Hold up. take Amy. a flap with See. this thing. And flap we did. I have rage you know this side stuff. and very bad aim. Dang it, it's a bit of a whiff there. Wow, <laughs> little, little did we suspect that the true question that we'd be answering today is how <laughs> difficult it is to hit a large target with a shoe. The struggle bus had certainly left the station. Before you all write it off, let the person with actual rage in his soul take over. I like that this is a competition for who has the most rage. Oh, oh Stephanie, it was never a contest. Rage Pat Engage! There you go. Not a chance. <laughs> so this is like the Hold classic on. physics experiment. You, you, not, nope, not even no. a little, nope. No, no man, no man. So if, if you <laughs> it really is your ninth grade physics class. If you've ever been- 98. <laughs> your teacher probably described how one thing can only exert as much force on the other as can be exerted on it. So if you punch a piece of paper, that paper can only exert as much force on you as you can exert on it. If anything that you're hitting or that's being hit is super flexible, it's going to immediately bring the force that it can actually deliver to zero. You're just delivering bend. You're not delivering any force. Equal and opposite reaction and all that? Yeah, all that. Newton, you know? He was on to something, you guys. Right, that's that's kind of why they put his name on the uh, measurement, oh, the yeah. unit of measure. Let's get another shoe. Next up was the sneaker, tastefully pulled from Amy's newest cosplay, Street Fighter. Little did she suspect how literal that would be for the shoe. So, since the sandal had way too much bend, we're going to try an everyday sneaker, which will give us a little bit more weight and a little less flexibility. Hold up, hold up, is this a pump? It is a pump. Is it gonna do more damage if I pump it all the way? No, actually it'll probably do less. Stop that. <laughs> <laughs> So satisfying! <laughs> With the shoe pumped up, it was time to swing. And immediately there was a clear difference. The less floppy sneaker wasn't losing all its force by bending away from the target. Across our swings, Steph and Amy had an average force in the low hundreds, and I clocked in at just over 200 newtons. And already you can see that it's not just the shoe making the difference. It's also the weight of the person that's doing the hit. All three of us wanted to be a part of this experiment because we represented a spectrum of sizes. A small, medium, and large, if you will. And as you can see with the data, there was a clear progression between the three of us. Amy was able to exert more force than Steph, and I, as the resident thick king of theorists, consistently did the most damage. Go figure, size matters, hence why contact sports like boxing have themselves weight classes. The other thing that matters when you hit someone with an object? Turning on the machine. Oh, it wasn't on. <laughs> Trust us, we're professional. Also, this is probably a good time to mention that we as professionals don't recommend trying this at home because as you're about to see, even professionals run into problems. Boy, oh. <laughs> 254. But I lost the shoe in the process. Famous last words, right? Over the course of my swings, I couldn't hold on to this thing for the life of me. Just choose flying left, right, and center. I don't know who should have been more scared. The force meter I was trying to hit, or the cameraman. Overall, the sneaker showed that at least we could get results, but nothing was really close to being even remotely deadly. Which meant that it was time to move on to the first heel-adjacent shoe, the wedge. And Amy made sure to bring a very weighty wedge. Oh! <laughs> it's heavy! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is gonna do damage. Oh, it was. This shoe, the heaviest one on the roster by far, weighed in at 460 grams or 1.01 pounds. This one was the first contender that felt like a real weapon. This is the wedge that you go to the club in and then you take it off midway through your evening and oh, then you put bro. it off to Wait, the side. Wait, you're the barefoot person in oh. the club? <laughs> oh no! So when you go to the club <laughs> in order to do the dance, this is the shoe that you should wear to protect yourself. Though yet again, the wedge shoe gave us the same grip issues. It's that it's a grip problem, actually. Yeah, I'm gonna really try These and like, are wedge from... my fingers in here and get a good and get a good handle on it. Ready? Two, Ooh, two forty-seven. Oh. Team theorist, always here to teach you the proper way to wield your footwear like a deadly weapon. Amy and I also got some big swings in while testing some alternative survival strategies. God. <laughs> Again, apologies to the camera people. Is your instinct I... the like 
hit and run. So you hit, drop, run. <laughs> right, I mean, honestly, the real solution shoe? here is like, ah, no! In the end, the heavier shoe brought Amy and Steph's max force to 245, while mine capped out at just under 400 newtons. And while those numbers were starting to get into impressive ranges, suddenly I realized that there was a question that we should have been asking ourselves from the very beginning. Was any of this actually better than just punching? If this is the question of whether you're better off using a shoe or just your fists, I feel like all of us need a baseline. Admittedly, we were all feeling a bit nervous considering none of us had ever really punched anything before. I don't think I've ever punched anything before. I'm kind of nervous. That's not true. He got really mad about scripts one time and punched a wall. I did say, <laughs> I punched the wall once. <laughs> but honestly, probably made the results better since most people haven't done that sort of thing in the past. And speaking of those results, they wound up to be very surprising. Whoa. Ooh. 480. 480. There was a good one. 548. Oh, 548. Yeah, 548. Nice. Okay. Nice. 891. Overall, each and every one of us were able to get double the force out of a punch than we were out of that heavy wedge. So between that and the awkward grip required to swing a shoe around, things weren't looking all that hot for the footwear fatality. But we weren't about to give up hope. It was finally time to swing some heels. For this test, we wanted to use different sizes of heel to get the best sample. What we immediately noticed, you know, outside of Amy's unique fashion choices. Ooh, these are fun. Are these yours, Amy? Those are mine. Oh, <gasps> really? Yeah. Yeah, so I like clear. fun socks. So you can show them off. Was that even though the force was about the same as the wedge, the area of impact was not. It is separate, so it's not a wedge. So we don't have force distributed all the way down the shoe. It really is just focused in the heel. The other interesting thing, and again, like this is the important thing to, to note when we're talking about this particular episode and force as a measurement, right? Force is pressure distributed across a surface area, right? So not only is it like how hard are you hitting something, but also how wide of an area are you hitting it with? So as we get to these like narrower and narrower, smaller and smaller heels, presumably all that force is getting funneled into a smaller surface area, so it should be doing more damage. Right you are, live action me. This is the linchpin of our experiment, pressure. Pressure is the force exerted on an object over a surface area. The smaller the area, the more pressure that you're actually applying. Case in point, bring out the stiletto. Again, if we're talking about force distribution across surface area, a fist is very wide, so yeah, you're gonna be delivering a lot of force, but it's gonna be dispersed over across a large surface area. If we're looking to do damage, you're never gonna stab something with a fist. And ultimately no. that's what this no. episode comes down to. It's not how much force do you need to hit it with, it's how much force do you need to puncture it. And from the beginning, there was a very visible difference here. Sure, the force we were delivering tended to be at the lower range for our shoes, but the damage we were doing with that force was much greater. It didn't puncture it, but I did get 147. You're seeing the like pointed damage yeah. that's being done to the bag itself. None of the other shoes were, were denting the surface. And you can see like, we almost broke through on a couple of them here. And then it was my turn. And on the first swing, it happened. And I ripped into it. Uh -huh. All right, our first stab of the day. Stab and a half. In fact, every time I landed a blow with only the heel, the results were constantly deadly. Oh, 166, but I, I did some. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, that's a huge. Definitely did some damage. The name Tiny Knives is entirely accurate. The stilettos were able to do damage at a level that none of the other shoes could. In short, coming out of the force test, it seemed like the recommendation for this episode was stilettos or nothing. Using punches ensures you don't lose most of your force through an awkward grip on a shoe, whereas stilettos are just able to do a bunch of ripping and puncture damage. But would it be enough to actually damage the human skull? And could we do enough damage? damage to actually bring someone down. It was time to bring out the heads. Since the actual force measurements were something that was giving us inconsistent ideas of what sort of damage they'd be doing, we decided to go all out and get replicas of the human head complete with actual skulls in there. We dug up some skulls and then no. put them on YouTube. No, we didn't. Not that. a human no. skull. These were provided by uh, a company called Zombie Go Boom. They did a fantastic job. You have a gel outside and an actual two scale human skull-like object inside. Right you are, Steph. These heads are made to replicate not only the human skull's actual durability, but the ballistics gel coating is also skin accurate. Plus, we had the insides specially filled with blue ooze because it's not blood. Blood isn't blue. This episode about smashing a human skull repeatedly with a shoe is totally monetization friendly. And hey, blue goo. It's kind of like a celebration of the new channel launching. Who needs a pinata when you can just smash some skulls with shoes from your very own closet? Again, thank you to Amy's Closet for the sacrifice. And 
thank you for your sacrifice, Mr. Head. Sir Head. Uh, I think our ballistics guy needs a name. Anybody have any good naming ideas? Ted. Ted the Head. So Amy's been doing the research for this episode, and you are now a skull expert, yeah? I do love myself a skull, so doing the research was a very fun thing to do. Is the skull your favorite bone in the body? It actually is. I think people undersell the skull. We all have them. They are beautiful. They let us have these beautiful faces. If the skull is Amy's favorite bone in the body, What's yours, Steph? I'm a clavicle gal myself, but I can appreciate a good skull. I'm more of a tibia man. No, you're, no, you're, no one's a tibia man. Oh, get out of here! <laughs> Hashtag justice for tibia! You, you just picked it because it's a funny name. You know what? Upon further reflection, Stephanie was right. I'm not a tibia man. I'm all about them metatarsals, baby! But before we started smashing skulls, it was important for us to know a little bit more about them to develop where exactly we should be aiming so we got the best chance of breaking through. Luckily, Amy and all her head bone knowledge was there to provide. Amy, take it away. Well, Matt, it turns out that the skull is not just a single bone, but rather a bony structure made up of approximately 22 different bones, 8 cranial bones and 14 facial bones. Now obviously, the weak points of our face are the holes that already exist there. Ears, nose, eyes, mouth, however none of that can give us the satisfaction of cracking into our skull replica. To do that, we have to aim at two main areas. Area 1, the terion, more commonly known as the temple. This is widely considered to be the weakest part of the skull, and comes with an extra bonus of having a major artery hiding behind it. If it's ruptured, it can cause internal bleeding that can lead to death. Good for our experiment, bad for everything else. Area two are the cranial suture lines that are formed when the fontanelles of your head fuse together during childhood. Fontanelles are the soft spot on a baby's head that allow a baby to more easily pass through the birth canal and give room for the brain to expand during early childhood development. They then fuse together around 18 months old, making that fused dome that we all think of as the top of the skull. But those resulting lines where they merge are weaker than any of the surrounding bone, making them great places to aim for in our experiment. Back to you, Matt. Armed with that knowledge, it was time to give Ted the Head his final send-off. Or at least try to give Ted his final send-off. I am so sorry for what's about to happen to you, Ted. Sorry, buddy. So sorry. I mean, he's about to be smacked with a sandal. It, it, he has no dignity left. Speaking of sandal, let's pull it out. And this, theorists, was the moment that we found the newest niche for all those ASMR channels out there. Slapping skulls with sandals. Actually, the sound is what really makes this one a good ride. Oh, Ooh, yeah. It's like a little slap. As to be expected, the sandal was doing nothing but getting Ted dirty. The sneaker also gave us lackluster results. Nothing. 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 Didn't even crack it. Enter the wedge. <laughs> oh! oh, 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 oh. It's At the end of Steph's turn, we realized that we may have been a little bit fast to assume any cracking had been done. We were definitely doing damage, but not enough to break through the skull. We heard a crack there, but actually the inside skull is still intact for me. That, however, wouldn't last long. Oh, yeah! yeah. It cracked it! Amy lives for violence. <laughs> That's awesome. It's also in slightly the shape of the side of the no, heel. No, you can, you can mm -hmm. see. Yeah, you can actually track it on there where you see how it dug in and ripped into it. The finishing blow, though, would ultimately come from me, but not before I got into character. Stumbling out of the club, had a good night. You're Someone comes girl. at me. I'm like, <laughs> leave me alone! Creep! <gasps> oh! <laughs> oh my gosh! That was very effective. I guess you could call me the clubbing clubber. It's completely cracked from the temple area all the way up through here. There's pieces. Oh no, they're, oh, oh. Got bone fragments out of my skull. So with us having proven the bludgeoning power of wedges and Ted no longer able to give us a clean experiment, it was time to put our first head out to pasture. Oh, he's a goner. You can see like it's well, the brain stem's gone. Oh man. Ah yes, the slow motion footage of a shoe caving in a human skull. Truly a fashion tradition like outfit of the day and haul videos. Seriously though, I know style theory sounds like it's a weird one. Everyone thought that food theory was weird too, but we've been going strong for a couple years now. And when you're talking about doing experiments like this, you know that you want to give this channel a subscribe. And guess what? We still have two more shoes and three more heads to get through. Brain yeah. surgery for dummies. Oh, awesome! Look, look. Oh, yeah. oh, there is like brain goo inside. Oh wow. Oh no. Oh, there's like layers There's brain matter. There's brain matter. There. Speaking of those heads, one more huge shout out to Zombie Go Boom. Well, we didn't get them for free, they did put them on a rush order to get them Style Theory Blue and to the studio in time for the shoot. But enough with the sappy skull montage because we haven't answered the biggest question of all, can a heel actually kill? First off, not only did we damage the skull, but also damaged my heel. 
so ratchet. How are you going to go back to the club in that? I know, I, I can't. I got to get a new pair. I'm going to go into my chonky heel. Equipped with a new shoe, we also needed ourselves a new head. Secondly, we got a new head, which means we need a new name. Yep. Is it going to be Ted 2? Or are we going like Ned the Head? This is clearly Ned the Head. With a rubber bottom and a significantly lighter shoe, I was skeptical that the chonky heel would be able to get the job done. Oh boy, was I wrong. Ooh, oh, that one sounded good. Oh, got a crack, got a crack. Oh, wow, you, you did. did. I, I missed where I was intending to hit completely. I was like several inches away, but I still got a crack. I am shocked. I did not anticipate that. My mind was blown. Figuratively, of course, I didn't want to be insensitive to Ted and Ned's current state. But in all seriousness, by aiming at the soft spot of the head, the sutures where the skull fused together, Steph was able to break through. And quite easily, in fact. It all came down to surface area. Standing here and hearing it happen, it's like you're using the head of a hammer. I didn't think that this would be strong enough or forceful enough to be able to do that, but that's exactly what's happening here. Yep. It's like we're bringing down the head of the hammer on top of the skull and literally penetrating. Yeah. Since we'd done so much damage to the top of the head, I wanted to see what would happen if I put that hammer-like force to the test against Ned's face. I was not disappointed. Ah! Oh, I got brain juice in my mouth. You oh, too wow. can show off the blood of your enemies with these. And now, Ned, you're being replaced. We need a new guy. Thank you. Next. One final pair of shoes meant that we had time for one final head and one final name. New head means new name. Fred. Fred the head. Fred the head is going to be christened here in short order because it's time for our final shoe of the day. Breaking out the little knives, the stiletto. Let's I'm do it. I'm so excited for this finale. So again, I think the, the goal here is get as one and done as you possibly can. Can you really just get the job done in a single stab? I don't just break up my good heels for any boy who walks into the studio. We oh. have a lovely oh. full on stiletto. Up to this point, Steph felt bad because she'd missed out on all the major cranial contusions. That was about to change. Given the success that we've had before, I'm gonna actually aim for this frontal area right down the, the zipper of the skull here. That does seem like it's been kind of our most consistent success rate. Oh! 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 oh my god! It looks like a bullet hole. This works so much better than I expected it to! Oh yeah! And again, that gets to the idea that the force meter wasn't telling the whole no. story. Mm. I mean, I feel like I hit it with a good amount of force, yeah, but right. my arm doesn't hurt. I didn't slug somebody hard with my knuckles. This was a really intentional, just really effective shot that's actually relatively low force for someone who would be wearing high heels. In one blow, Stephanie had penetrated the skull and gotten right into Fred's frontal lobe. Against all expectations, the myth of killer heels worked. It's totally plausible. That is one of the things that I love when we do experiments on the channels. Food theory has it, style theory has it. When you go in not expecting the result to to actually happen, and then all of a sudden you do, and it, it completely disproves everything that you thought was going on. There you have it, theorists. We did it. Killer heels do literally exist, and we've proved it. But you know we can't just stop there. When the science is done, we do it for the fun. Amy went for the eye just to see what would happen, and me, well, I'm an artist. Oh! <laughs> oh! One oh fewer thumbnail that we have to do for our launch episodes right there. I think Fred has officially served his purpose at this point. And honestly, again, it goes to show that this wasn't just purely about physical force. It was about the puncturing ability. Going into the skull tests, I think all of us were a little bit skeptical about what the heels could do. As we were wrapping up that section, we were all like, oh yeah, why wouldn't you just punch? We were all like, <laughs> punching is the best way to go. Absolutely. You get the most force, it looked by numbers, yeah. like the best thing that you could do. Totally proved us wrong. And even when we were starting out with some of the other shoes, like the sneakers, it became clear how hard this skull was underneath. So it's not easy to get through it. And the heel just like, like a knife. It just goes straight through. One of my favorite things to happen on these channels is when we go in thinking that we know what the conclusion is gonna be and then it completely being upended by the end of the episode. This is one of those times. I did not think that I would walk out of the studio today with a high heel shoved into our skull. Done, done, it's proven. The idea of the killer heel is there. Proof is in the pudding. Good job, everyone. Woo, woo. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Should you use your shoes in order to defend yourself? Can your killer heels actually kill someone? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely they can. Just make sure they're a stiletto. But hey, that's just a theory.
A style theory. Keep looking sharp. Literally. Sharp. Literally Look. sharp. Pointed. Literally sharp. Speaking of fashion that kills, did you know that your makeup is probably poisoning your face right now? That video is on the left. Anyway, go, go. Binge watch style theory all day, my friends. It is our new channel. Give us all the watch time so the algorithm loves us and makes us a viable fashion channel. Thank you, as always, for your support. I'll see you over on one of those other videos.